This is the place where sports fans get a lot dead in sports. I'm one of your three hosts, Kenneth B. Inch. Joining me, we have Shelton and FIFO. What up, fellas? What's happening? We just want to, we, we, we're getting together, man, to just kind of discuss the WNBA. They, too, were in a thrilling game versus France. It was uh, the same matchup in both the men and women. By now, you probably already know that. And the 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 thing is, because I, I watched the game today, I didn't get a chance to watch it yesterday because I was recording. But while we were recording, as the mic still on, Spike was telling us that they were like in a dog fight, like it was, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't looking sweet. And um, I think they were down when we started, we and yep. yeah, and they were down eight. eight. Yeah, and then I think. Uh, but well, they were only down by like a point or two because it was in like the fourth quarter. And then I looked and they were up by three. And it looked like it was like, it, and so the game was almost over. So I was surprised to see the score was 67 66 at the end because um, I was like, how do you score that many points in like 17, 14 seconds? But anyway, um, watching the game though, it was, a, it was a hell of a comeback by the woman. Um, you know, just like the men, a lot of resolve. Uh, Aja Wilson turned up. In the second half, she struggled in the first half. Almost like the physicality was getting to them a little bit. Um, unlike them, they were sloppy, but not as sloppy as, as the men's were. But that whole first half was just ugly, slow-moving, terrible basketball. You know, 15 points in the first quarter, 10 points in the second quarter. It wasn't pretty to watch. But the second half, we got a little bit more um, excitement. And... Um, and I, I'll tell you where I, I felt like they lost the game, France did. Because when I saw they were about 10, I was like, 35-25, I was like, well, shit, what the hell happened? It was that turnover. It was that turnover, France coming down the court. They had careless turnover out of bounds on the, on the on a pass to the left. They came down the court, court uh, uh, plum or somebody hit that three in, in the right corner, and then they went on the run. And at that at that point, it's, it's you in a dog fight. No more pressure yeah. is really on France. You, you know what? I mean, like the that. USA like that. Th- th- this game was punch counter punch on both sides, um, the whole game through. And when I, what my eyes tell me is, France only got one girl that can go get hers, and that was Gabby Williams. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. um, the point guard is nice, but um, down the stretch when she got bro- blocked by Brianna Stewart. Like, she don't have enough in her bag. Now, she did hit a Steph Curry three uh, toward the end of that first half with, with the shot clock going down. And they even contested it. She hit that thing. Yeah, so, obviously, she got awesome. the range. Yeah, yeah. She definitely got the range. But she doesn't have the shot-making ability. She's more of a pass-first player, uh, which is fine. But France didn't have enough of Gabby Williams where America does because that's the, the style of basketball that we just cultivate in America. Um, a lot of one-on-one type of players, individual greatness. When you put them in a team construct, the cream rises to the top. We saw Asia. You already talked about how she struggled in the first half. She couldn't buy a bucket. Can to me, it wasn't necessarily the physicality because she met physicality with physicality. She just couldn't buy it. She was being mm-hmm. aggressive. She wasn't getting the calls. You know what I'm saying? So she couldn't get a rhythm at the free throw line. You know what I'm saying? It was just miss after miss after miss, and it was point blank stuff. You know what I'm saying? Her jumper was okay. Second half, like you said, she turned up. Um, This was a good game. I do not watch um, enough women's basketball to know if they're in the same predicament as the men, right? Because the WNBA has a lot of American-born players, not as many foreign-born players, not saying that there aren't any. But it's not like the NBA because the best leagues in the world are overseas, not in America. So these women play in the WNBA, then they go play in other leagues as well because they pay more. And it's honestly, it's better competition overall. That being said, is this game a microcosm of the world just in general, of the world just catching up in basketball in general? Because you can honestly, like watching that game, France had the size, but they didn't have the same amount of talent we did. But it, 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 it was a close game from the tip-off. Right. Well, I mean, you're talking about Worried a team. About go, oh, yeah, go ahead, Sheldon. I was going to say, people, you're right. It, it, is, it is different, though. I think that the men's game, the gap is closing faster than the women's game. France had a, a great effort, but 
at the same time, I still think the Americans overall hold the edge as far as women's basketball and the, and the talent gap. I think these these ladies here, they are used to playing overseas and they're, they're used to, you know, the international basketball game. So you see that still. And, and you see a lot of the talent coming from the States as opposed to the opposite direction. Plus, these women are not going one and done in college. They're not going, skipping college, going straight to the league. They're going to college and playing these games as well. So the talent it pool is different than the men's game where you got the one and done. You got guys that ain't thinking about college. They're going just to hoop and moving on. So it's still a different aspect in that in, in that setting. But like I said, Asia Wilson brought it. As usual, Asia, Asia is probably the best bas- women's basketball player in the world. Not probably, she is. And, you know, she had a great second half. She's four for five and seven free throws. And she's she's just incredible in general. I was looking through her accolades, and I, I didn't. Re- I, I always knew she was tough, but I didn't know she had done all this. This is crazy. Yeah, her. Um. Oh, were you gonna go through it? I can real quick. Her resume since 2018. She won the NCAA championship in 18. She was Wooden Award winner in 18. First pick in the WNBA draft in 18. 19. She was a WNBA All Star. For the second time, 2020, she won gold with the USA. 2020, she was WNBA MVP. 21, she was a WNBA All-Star for the third time. Uh, 22, she was WNBA MVP again. She was a champion, WNBA champion in 22. She was the player of the year for the second time in 23. WNBA champion in 23. She was an All-Star for the sixth time. Uh, she's a favorite for the MVP this year, and she won gold again this year. It's just incredible, like, her list of accolades. You know what it sounds like? What's that? It sounds like a, a young Lisa Leslie. Exactly. Exactly. And and that's the type of talent she is. Um, and she does it on both ends of the floor. And it's, it's, it's hard to beat her. Yeah, and I, I think that last part is really where she shined a lot. Like, she grabbed – so you know, she had 13 rebounds, but her defensive presence was was huge in that second half. She had two blocks, damn near back to back, or in, in close stretches, and she really impacted the 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 um, France players. And um and she had a, she had a big jumper, you know. She was she was just everywhere. Like it, it, it's it's almost very similar to the men's where. What is the resolve, right? We were talking about this earlier, Shelton. Is like when you're on the court, things are not going your way. You know, um, you're down, you know, and it seems like everything against you. How are you going to stay in the game, stay mentally tough, and just wait until your moment right. comes? And she was able to do that. The rest of them were able to do that. Uh, Plum came off the bench and was, was great. Brianna Stewart has some, some pretty big moments. Um, and then in the fourth quarter, uh, Cooper, Copper, Copper, Copper Copper. was, yeah, was amazing. Like, uh, Mm -hmm. 10 points, eight, eight clutch baskets. So it really became like this whole team effort where every, all of them came together, united around this, this, this common goal, because we've had our conversations about men versus women's basketball and the popularity of the sport. And before is the mice salon, we were just talking about, I was joking like, oh, they need Caitlin Clark when it was like in a close game. If they had Caitlin Clark, they wouldn't be in this situation. You know, Q made a good point. Angel Reese's defense could have helped out, but I, I felt like the team was fine without either one of them and mm-hmm. not to have that, that conversation. But we're talking about a team that has won 60 straight games, and this is their eighth gold medal. They were in danger of losing that. And really, the only conversation I could I we, we were hearing about was the threat about the men possibly losing and getting bronze, right? Like, where 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 was the dialogue around that? And and especially with the increase in popularity, um, so I thought that that was interesting watching that game because it didn't feel like it felt like no one really cared, <laughs> right? You know, can, like, like you could tell by by the stands, the stands wasn't as packed as it was for that for the men's game, mm-hmm. um. And it's crazy, right? Because you, you named all of those stats for the women. They haven't lost since ninety two. A game. But is that why people you, you think that's why it was it was so blah? 
because it's is one sided? I think personally, um, the women's game lacks excitement that the men do. Just in general. Not saying that they're worse basketball players, because fundamentally we know that they are better and overall better shooters top to bottom. It lacks the athletic prowess that men have versus women, and it lacks the excitement of alley-oops and dunks. It it lacks that. I I don't care what nobody says. I watch both of them. I enjoy both of them, but I enjoy men better because they are bigger, stronger, faster. That being said, Ken, you you talked about the increase in popularity. Why is that? And that person wasn't on this team because – the WNBA feels like an old league. Colin Cowherd today was talking about something. And I, I was like, hmm, very interesting take. He said, when you watch Steph play, it feels like it's now. And you watch certain other teams and players play, it feels antiquated, right? When you watch women's basketball, Ken, you can see the talent. But do we get excited? Asia's a baller. But imagine if Asia Wilson two hand dunk put did a shot. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the difference in the game, Ken. Like when she hit the jumper and she was ah oh, all hype. You know who I you know who I saw on the court? I saw KG. I'm like, oh man, she going crazy like KG. She talked to herself, hyped herself up. I'm like, yo, those are moments, but they don't get attached to not saying that the jumper's not a great play, but it's not a highlight play. Right. They don't yeah. have highlights in the same way. And to me, that's what hurts it and why Caitlin Clark, because she's the, 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 the female version of Steph. Steph don't go out there and dunk. But we saw and we talked about it where Steph in a two to five minute period put you out the game. Right. That is highlight worthy, which is why the interest is there around her. But the rest of them and why we love Diana Taurasi when she was younger. You know what I'm saying? Because she she had that same thing in her. It, it just it, she wasn't just like a three point shooter like that. You know, she was definitely the Kobe NJ of her era. But the women game lacks super excitement, Ken, and that's the reason why it'll they're gonna struggle overall. Yeah, I, I definitely like uh, watching Copper play a little bit more. Definitely seeing a lot more fluid than than some of the other ones. And I, I think France, they were putting up shots that was crazy. Like that that logo three was crazy. Johansson was was jacking them up. And it's it's weird because when she shoots, she kind of – she's in a constant motion. It's like Ayaya was doing the same thing where she'll shoot, but she's moving sideways. It's like – at first I thought that was a fluke. I'm like, but they kept doing this shit. I'm like, what the hell? I thought they got rid of that and, and you know, <laughs> the little push shot or whatever. But anyway – um, but no, I, I agree. I think that was a takeaway while I enjoyed the game. I thought it was exciting. It was definitely thrilling, you know, trying to figure out how they was they were going to come back and win this game. It was like, where was where was the moment that we were like, oh man, that I got hyped for, and and I didn't I didn't really get there. There wasn't a flurry of threes or, you know, Aja had some great blocks, and I, I did like a you know the blocks she had. Those were crazy, and she got hyped for those. But right. you know, it was just. Just the rigmarole, but overall, I, I still enjoyed the game. I thought it was good. I'm glad that they won, but I I, I would have been curious to see what would happen if they would have lost. But I think in 2028, though, looking ahead, Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, mm-hmm. it might be a different crowd if what yeah. everybody believes is happening continues to happen. Right. It might yeah, be talk- different because because now we're talking about both of those ladies in their prime. They have four mm-hmm. years of WA experience. And, you know, one of them, if not both of them, they may be champions at that point in time. Like, there's so many things that could happen in four years for them, right? Mm-hmm. But, the, but the thing that we do know is that they're going to be ready. Mm-hmm. Barring catastrophic injury where they can't walk or, you know, and I'm not, I'm not putting that on nobody, but I'm just saying that's the only thing that will hold them back from not being the face of the, of the USA team alongside of Asia Wilson because Asia is still going to be a baller because mm-hmm. how, how old is Asia? She's uh, late twenties, right? Yeah, she is. How old they look? I know. Well, you said six years in the league. She probably played three years of college. So, boom, that puts you. She like twenty between twenty six and twenty eight. She's twenty eight. Thirty two. You still balling, and you pair her with Angel Reese. That's gonna be middle twenties. Angel Reese gonna be like twenty five, twenty six. Oh man, 
Caitlin Clark going to be 24, 26? Like, yeah, man. Like, like I, I, I think – I don't think that the women's game as is as in trouble as the men's game. I do agree with Shelton because again, like when you look at like bro, we like we stack one through twelve, yeah, mm-hmm. and the, the women, the, the other women's are not stacked like that. They got yeah. ballers and they have chemistry and they have camaraderie, but they just they're not stacked like that. And and in all honesty, the women's both like you know what I'm saying like they've been more dominant than the men. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they they've been more yeah. dominant, so I, I I don't see that falling off. Um, but for this game to be as close as it was, can you know we talk? I talked to, um about you know having the three big dogs on USA men's basketball team mm. and having Ant where his light didn't feel dimmed. The only light that was bright here was Asia. Oh, and um, mm. Brianna, Stewart. Brianna Stewart was was yeah. I, right. and, and and then uh, Copper, yeah, wanted, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. But she came, I think she came off the bench, but yeah, yeah. But those three felt like, oh, y'all like y'all y'all really y'all like y'all built like that. The rest mm-hmm. of them fell into a role. You right. know what I'm saying? But I know the thing about Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, they ain't falling into no role. <laughs> they they going out there to be the superstars of the team. And they mm-hmm. want it, you know what I'm saying. So um, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about them like I am the men. But uh, congrats mm-hmm. to them winning the gold. Yeah. Yes. Now, now the only thing, another, another thing that can stop them. If, if, I don't know if y'all saw this news about Dierica Hamby, but she's suing the WNBA. Um, she plays with the Sparks now, but she was with the Aces, and she's alleging discrimination based on the fact that she was pregnant. And they kind of came down hard on her, so that's something else that could go wrong mm. in this mm. time. But um, yeah, she's suing them. She had, she filed a federal lawsuit against the WNBA and the Las and the Las Vegas Aces on Monday regarding her treatment from the Aces after revealing mm. she was pregnant. So Ooh. WNBA got all you know other problems, you know, within it too. But man, I, I do you think that? Let me ask y'all this: Do y'all think the solution would be to lower the goal? To nine feet or nine and a half feet. That's what I think. Nah, some of them motherfuckers can dunk now. They just don't do it. It ain't enough of them, though. I want to see, I want to see a guard. Well, we like to see an ant or a jaw, one of them guards get up there and yam on somebody. Them guards in the WNBA can't dunk. It's it's the post players that can, you know, get to the rim, but they can't, they can't, you know. That's fine, man. It ain't for everybody, bro. Like yeah, I <laughs> I, I've I've always got excited when when you see it happen because it's so rare. So yeah. yeah, when I've seen women dunk, I was like, oh shit, that shit that shit is tight. So if the guards can't get up like that, that you know, hey, that it's just not meant for you. But you get a couple of them post players and centers yamming, yeah, bro. That <laughs> hey, look, I, I've seen a couple of high school girls throughout the you know recent years getting up there. So. I think the game is evolving, and I think that there will be a time where dunks are more regular. Not as much as the men's game, but it'll be more regular. You'll see maybe two, maybe three dunks a game. Uh, we just not we're not there right now, but I think we're getting closer to it. We'll leave it there. Congrats to the USA Team USA Women's Basketball Team.